What's up, Trad Nation? This is Breaking Trad. All right, welcome back to another episode of Breaking Trad. I'm Alan. And I'm Alan. No, you're not, Alan. Oh, okay, fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm Alan. I'm <laughs> Alan. I'm Alan. You can't all be Alan. What's wrong with you guys? You're right. Huh? I'm Amanda. I'll be myself. <laughs> what? Am- imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery? I'm going to be everybody, Neela. Everybody abort Neela. <laughs> <laughs> to talk me into naming Addie, naming Mira. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I only had one son. I was, you know, I thought maybe a I could, backwards Alan. Was yeah, there, right? yeah, N E L A. I don't know. You know how much Alan is backwards? <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much for you, big boy. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, so, uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Everybody good? Good. Mm-hmm. This rain's Wait. about to kill me. I'm Brittany. Oh, what? see, you guys messed around too much. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you do it again? I'm Alan? No. <laughs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> You're sleepy? It's raining. You better now. dial it, it in. Is na- we weather. want, like, some down comforters and those squishy and pillows and Start- a really cozy bed. It's too like much estrogen in here. Me and Brittany <laughs> voted to stay in, <laughs> stay in the house in the oh. room. We were going to snuggle and find out who killed Sarah. Yeah, we were going to watch Who's Netflix. Sarah? We don't know. I don't know. We don't we know who got to watch her. it. Y'all made us come be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. God, God forbid. I've I've watched. Uh, well, <laughs> I've watched TV for the last two nights. Yeah. 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 I got to watch TV this week. <laughs> what? I got to watch an hour and twenty minutes of television. Oh, when today? Yesterday? Over two days. Oh, over two days. Over there two you days. go. There you go. <laughs> two 45-minute shows. No, it um, was actually, I had to cut it off right in the middle of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you're awfully quiet over there this evening. I didn't watch TV. You, <laughs> you spend all your time putting uh, the videos together. Mm-hmm. What was that? Um, oh, what was our last guy? Anyways, He's a good guy. David? David, there you go. David. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like only two people will be going hunting there. <laughs> <laughs> Three, you can't, I mean, you can't hold Amanda accountable for what Alan good point. said. Huh? You, we're, yeah. We're yeah, going you cannot you. hold me accountable for his actions. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad everybody's in good shape and ready mm-hmm. to go. Um, we got a really, a really unique, really cool guest coming on this evening, I think. Okay. Anyways, you remember his name? I t- actually wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, he is, we met him in Kentucky this year. He is from Sturgis, Kentucky. He uh, he is an avid traditional archer, uh, outdoor enthusiast, owner of Ramshackle Homestead, both north and south. <laughs> yeah. And um, he was uh, on season seven of Alone, Mr. Keith Sires. Keith, how are you, buddy? But he might also oh. be from Curlew. Yeah, so yeah. can you settle something for us real quick? Because <laughs> we were doing some research, and um, there was contradiction in to regards of where you're actually from. Is it Sturgis or Curlew? Uh, I am actually the mayor of Curlew. You are the oh, mayor of Curlew? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Population currently like five. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. <laughs> that's uh. That, that makes that makes sense. Is, is that that's you, sense. your wife, and three children? Uh, well, no, we got some people down the road. There's two other people down the road. So there's three of us and two of them. Oh, okay. Was there was there an election that was held? No, it's pretty much uh, uh, just a totalitarian type government. There you go. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, well, so we met you at our first year. We went to Kentucky Trad Fest, and. Um, you walked up to the table and introduced yourself, and everybody was like, "Holy crap, that's that's Keith right there!" <laughs> and then it's just been uh, we've been in talks. You, um, we invited you on the show. You agreed, and then we met you again at the uh, the Tennessee Classic. But uh, what is uh, how did you get started shooting traditional archery? Ah, man, probably 
Jeez, I'm gonna tell my age here. Uh, I'm gonna say thirty six years ago. Thirty six years ago. Yeah, uh, buddy, mine's dad like literally made stick bows. Like he would make us these little stick bows out of uh, just a like the perfect branch and some uh, like trot line string, and we would shoot corn chucks for those things. And I think. <laughs> You know, we went around shooting everything. They didn't have any knuckles left, of course, because we were shooting them off our hand, you know, kind of medieval <laughs> style. And, and those corn shucks, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty rough on the old thumb knuckles. Uh, but that really kind of lit a fire under me. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I always tinkered around with trying to build bowls and stuff as a kid. And then, of course, uh, as a teenager, I, I had to go try the compound route. And Uh-oh. was fairly successful with that uh, for probably about – 10 years or so and then uh it just my heart never really was in it Mm -hmm. and so i picked up an old recurve man honestly i don't even know maybe ebay maybe ebay was a thing at that time and i had some pretty good luck first couple years and really uh as the only time i've looked back i had a little bit of a shoulder injury a couple years ago Mm -hmm. and uh I, i bought a compound bowl at a uh uh pawn shop and shot it like one season until my shoulder got right and then i gave it to a kid lives over the hill here and uh <laughs> haven't picked one of those wretched things up since oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's been recurve longbow primitive that kind of thing from that point forward yeah totally from that point forward and uh i would probably be a lot better shooter if i would stick to one or the other <laughs> I but, gotcha. man, I'm like a squirrel on the road, you know, uh, I'm all over the place. Uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll build a bow. I like it. I'll shoot it for a while and then I'll end up giving it to somebody and then I'll go back shooting a recurve. Then I'll build another bow and I'll shoot it for a while. And then, you know, I, I may shoot one of my other recurves and, uh, I, I bounce back. It seems like more than anything nowadays between self bows and, uh, my, my old bear recurves. I, I kind of got a soft spark. My, Heart for bears. I've, I've had a little bit of everything through the years, but it seems like I always circle back to the. I was just watching a. I was just watching a YouTube video. Um, I think it was actually your video of the twenty two Kentucky Trad Fest. Is that a bear Kodiak you're you're slinging arrows out of? In that? Oh yeah, that, that's a that's a super mag, a forty eight inch super mag. Yeah, that. My my thoughts were to get really good with that little dude and try to kill a turkey with it this year mm-hmm. and. Or, turkey season was it was an uphill battle let's just say that so it it never got (laughs) drug out i I went from my usual gig trying to shoot black powder and kill one which i'm pretty successful black powder hunter and then Mm -hmm. i was going to kind of grab the little bear up we ended up putting the black powder up grabbing the real shotgun and and, uh, scratching it out like three days before season was out so oh there you go you know i spent a lot of time shooting that little dude and and i had it at trad fest uh just because, you know, I'm I'm six foot tall. Mm-hmm. That bowl is 48 inches long. And everybody is, gets kind of freaked out about finger pinch and, and, and that type thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, I I, uh, I got a weird and extremely unorthodox uh, way of shooting. And I would never, like, somebody's like, man, how do you shoot? You know, or show me how to shoot. I'm like, I am not that person. You know, <laughs> you could ask a dude that's been shooting for two years to show you how to shoot and be better off. Because I have this weird short draw. Mm-hmm. almost snap shoot that I do. So that 48 inch bow, even at my height, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me at all. I think so, like my true draw links like 27 inches. Maybe. I got you. So I noticed that when I was watching this video, are you using your chin as like your, your, um, I wouldn't say your anchor point, but more like your, your trigger. Yeah, man. You're like, you're all, you're all over it, dude. Uh, I actually take my knuckle to the corner of my mouth. Uh-huh. And that brings the kind of the sight picture. I, I don't necessarily, and, and I'll be the first to admit, I've been doing this for a long time, and I am the worst at like what nomenclature is and what people are calling this and that. But I, I'm definitely more of an instinctive shooter. I mm-hmm. just see the arrow. I see what I'm shooting at. I see it all in one picture. And when it looks good, I send it. I got yeah, you. I, I think I told you the other day, I would make a terrible, terrible, uh, like ring shooter or target shooter, whatever, whatever it is that they do. <laughs> um, well, so like you, you, how long have you been shooting that way? As far as like, what, 
Like, what caused you to, um, for that to be your your trigger or your release point? Like, is it just something that you were more consistent with? Yeah, because I have tinkered around, you know, with like going to a longer draw link and, and anchoring at my jawbone, and you know, I, I've tinkered around with a lot of things, and, and nothing really felt as comfortable or as natural as as that did. And, and some me and some friends, we've actually even shot like horse bowls where you kind of float anchor from the chest. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a while to get good doing that, and definitely something you have to practice at. So I don't know if it's like an extension of that. It definitely was what I did when I was a younger, you know, like with the, the homemade bows and, the, and that type thing. It's yeah. just a carryover. And, you know, it's honestly, uh, you know, and truthfully, it's probably a bad habit that I've just never broke. And it's a bad habit that works for me. So uh, I got a I, bunch I of those, turned, too. Don't feel bad. <laughs> no, yeah, I, mean... I, I just turned 48 and uh, I'm not, I'm not going to fix it. I was listening to you guys podcast with the uh, man, extremely knowledgeable gentleman there from uh I think he's from Northern Alabama. Yeah. And I can, can <laughs> not recall his name, but everybody goes to his clinics. And I'm like, yeah, that dude. Rod, would Mr. Rod, yeah. Rod yeah. Yeah. Mi- yes. Yes. He would throw me out. He would be like, <laughs> leave, be gone. <laughs> well, I mean, um, like, you're, the reason I, th- okay, so I may be speaking out of turn. So please stop me if it's not legitimate, but you shoot your bow for a whole different reason than a lot of the competitive shooters, right? Yeah, like, you know, like I said, I, I would make a terrible competitive shooter. And, you know, even talking on that level, I think uh, I don't have target panic mm-hmm. on like a circular style target. But I don't have the focus I feel like I have, like on an animal target or right. trying to, you know, you can throw a Mountain Dew bottle top up there. And I'm going to say, man. Three out of four times at 15 yards, I can hit it. You throw one of the yellow, red, blue ring targets up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to struggle probably hit that yellow circle <laughs> three that. out of four times. As, as weird as that sounds, no, that, I, that won't be the case. I feel like on an animal target, because you have that kill zone, you know that's where you need it to go. Well, you know, I don't know. It's Well, when you, it's less... you hunt, what, like, correct me if I'm wrong, almost every day. Yeah. If not every season, right? Yeah, I'm I'm extremely fortunate. Uh, I probably won't be as fortunate this year, uh-huh. but uh, you know, I work for myself. I, I'm I'm currently working for the Department of Fish and Wildlife here in Kentucky, so uh, my season may get a little Chopped may not up. be as liberal as it usually is. But yeah, yeah man, I, I would say I hunt. I don't know how many days our bow season is, but after October, mm-hmm. I probably hunt six days a week. There you go. You know, maybe not morning and evening, but I'm also blessed. Uh, I've got my own farm. I can literally walk out the door and in two minutes be at a decent spot, you know, to whitetail hunt and or turkey hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, my buddy Derek Omer that you guys met. Yeah. Uh, he and I have got a pretty big lease with some guys, and it literally I walk across the road from my mailbox and I stand on it, and then it goes on for for a long way. So uh, you just you know I, I don't even have to drive anywhere I, I just walk out the door there you go that's awesome that's a dream for me yeah yeah it's, it's pretty sweet there. matt's but just about there matt's just about matt's got, got that it, yeah mm-hmm. yeah, but, it. yeah it, mac and a test there's nothing better man it almost makes you lazy <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so um i'm just just curious like we said you were on you know season seven of alone I, and i noticed the bow is that one that you made the the one that you took with you no, actually, it's not. Uh, I almost I didn't take anything I made on a loan, and it's really? odd because, you know, my kind of my thing is making uh, traditional style knives, and yeah. I do make a I make a few uh, flat bows a year. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a bowyer by any stretch of imagination, but no, uh, I had done some uh, work with Ryan Gill down at Hunt Primitive in Florida, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to let the cow the bag that you're on the show, but there were a few people that knew. And uh, I hit Ryan up. I was like, hey, man, you want to get one of your bows on, uh, you know, <laughs> international <laughs> television? And he was, you know, he was all over it. He was, like, super stoked because, I mean, he is definitely a showman and a salesman, uh, you know, all at the same time. Right. And I was like, all right, you know, let's make me just a simple Eastern Woodland-style flat bow because that's what I like to shoot. Yeah. You know, that's what I feel. And he, nothing doing. That wasn't happening. You know, so I got the full deal of uh, rattlesnake skins, buffalo tip overlays, uh, beaver skin handle. 
<laughs> I took all river cane arrows uh, that he'd done up. Yeah, he hooked me up. He, he really did. Yeah, it was a nice-looking nice looking bow. Nice-looking stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and I hardly ever shoot it anymore. I, I just oh. leave it sitting, hanging up in my cabin. I mean, I'll get it out every once in a while and shoot it. But well, it's it, kind of like a, a special thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would hate to break it. Right. I mean, he, he definitely, he builds a stout bow. He built that one, you know, big enough to kill the musk ox or uh, moose, whatever I might run into. But still, I, you know. Well, what was the uh, weight on it, did you say, or did I miss that? Did I miss it? Uh, it was 50, 58 at 28, so probably at my draw length, I'm thinking it was around 55, 53, just depending on, you know, the amount of clothing and Oh, yeah. what all i had on at the time so yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna say i was pulling mid 50s on it which the more weight i lost definitely got a little bit tougher i got you i got you what got you into the whole bushcraft survival style thing uh <laughs> this is a this is actually hilarious uh i i, I mean i don't want to say i was naive enough that i didn't know it was a thing i mean i kind of knew it was a thing uh-huh but uh until a few years ago, I wasn't even like really into the, you know, all the social media stuff. I, I could give, for lack of a better word, I give two shits about it. And <laughs> I, I find myself even like kind of as a small business owner, it's a struggle, you know, because I'm kind of drifting more back that way mm-hmm. when I need to not do that. Yeah. But uh, it, it was weird because uh, I had met Ryan Gill's cameraman at the Tennessee Classic. Mm-hmm. He came up and stayed at our farm, and we did a few things. And then uh, Ryan had seen some of my flintlock kills, and he was kind of looking for a, a, a guy to, to get in with that on. And mm-hmm. then I met uh, Jason Smith, who was on Alone the Beast. I met him over in Virginia at another thing. And uh, Jason, you know, after he kind of got to know me, and Jason's a, he's a hardcore dude. He's a primitive archer, uh, retired Seer instructor, retired Delta Force medic. I mean, he's he's the real deal. Wow. And he was like, dude, you need a like a YouTube channel or something. He's like, you got, you know, you got a lot of things people would like. He said, you know, I, I feel like you really, you know, know what you're talking about. Very skilled dude. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I cut up and go on. You guys have been around me, but I'm actually a pretty modest person. I mean, I, I don't feel... I feel it more nowadays, but I, do, I didn't feel at that point like I was anything outside the normal. Right, right. And so that kind of, I'd always done it. Like my grandparents uh, were really, you know, grew up there in that Depression era type thing. Were really self sustaining type people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just a weird kid. You know, I, I had the luxury of growing up in the country. So I trapped from our early age, hunted from my early age, like was always in the woods. And that kind of involved in the bushcraft, really, without me even knowing it, you know, being <laughs> yeah. oblivious to it almost. Mm-hmm. Right. It was almost you, second nature, yeah. Yeah, it's just the way you grew up. Yeah. It's right. part of life. Yeah, and then, you know, kind of Jason's influence and a couple of others, you know, on the social media side. And, you know, next thing I knew, I was on loan. <laughs> <laughs> now we all can see it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to sign these guys up. Who We're guys? not going to tell them about it. What guys? <laughs> Y'all. Sign us We're up. Sending y'all away. Yeah. Oh, for a second. Oh, <laughs> it's definitely home. a special kind of suck. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looked like it was a special kind of suck. I can. I mean, but it had like there had to be a level of like enthusiasm and excitement. You know what I mean? Once you hit the ground, right? I mean, oh. it was. It had to been surreal to a certain extent. Like it just looks so yeah. pretty up there. The whole the whole experience was surreal, and to back up a little bit. Uh, and this, you know, I've said this on several other podcasts, but to, to really get the whole story out there, uh, Naked and Afraid had actually approached Jennifer and I about doing a uh, couples uh, Naked and Afraid. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, eh, but we were like down to the final little bit of it. Like we were flying out, trying to get everything lined out to fly out to, I uh, guess, LA to where they do the final screening or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, alone got a hold of her because they were having a hard time finding women oh. and uh they reached out to her and she did a skype interview and she was in front of what was my woods or my blacksmith shop at that time which is kind of a catch-all and uh, man, i've got this uh like the eaves are open to let the smoke out but they're ever shed skull deadhead there's a couple pigs go i don't know what i was hanging out <laughs> 
there is a lot of bone hanging in these rafters, you know, and it's right. all the whole front of it looks like something you see out west where they make those arches. And they were like, Oh, did you do all that? And she's like, No, that was my husband. And she's like, Well, would he be interested in the show? So Jennifer <laughs> oh, actually man. got me a Skype interview and I never applied to that show ever. But I did like season two, my dad was like, Hey, there's a show you know, on TV, blah, blah, blah. And he told me about it. And I about halfway applied, which I had no idea, no social media. Nothing like that. Right. And so that didn't go any further than that. But yeah, then when me and her got involved with it, when uh, they Skype interviewed me, we both ended up going to boot camp and, you know, the rest of it, me puking on uh, international TV. <laughs> and there you were. Even though, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed. I didn't get to see you got me like, which is kind of funny, but me and my daughter, that's like our favorite show. Naked and afraid. It's just like, yeah. Alan will tell you, he's like, well, at least it's you're either, not watching it's murder either shows. You, you walk in the house. It's either like somebody's <laughs> talking about killing their husband or they're watching a bunch of naked people walk around and grab firewood. And so it's, <laughs> it's like one or the other. It's neither it's like, there's nothing in between. Absolutely. As long as she keeps gathering firewood, you'll be all right then. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh, dude. She, okay, so we did a little research. I just want to. I want to let you know. Like we, we. So we went back and watched the episode and all, or watched a few episodes. And my daughter, she don't ever like really pay attention or anything like that and watch TV or anything like that. She looks up at me and she goes, "Dad, I want to learn how to do that." And I was like, "What do you mean, do that?" She's like. Like what they're doing, I want to do that. I was like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. Let's yeah. do it. She was like uh, the fire making. Like she wants, she's always she wants pocket knife and she wants a fire starter. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I wish you guys had said something at the classic because I did. I had a whole uh, several sets of fire starters over at my booth. I would have hooked her up. Oh, oh man, man. she yeah. loved it. I'd have, I'd have, I had her burning her. everything. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. what like that's what she was trying to talk us into going outside. Like it was like nine o'clock last night. Like let's go. I want to go do that. Let's go do that now. <laughs> Alan's like you're gonna have to wait, and it's gonna rain tomorrow. So I'll take you out there. We'll but figure gonna, it out. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> Yeah, if you can do it in the rain, then then you're really doing something. I know. Right? Any, anybody can do it when it's dry. So mm -hmm. yeah. we're gonna start easy. Yeah, Let's we're just get her a little bundle up and let her strike a few into it and see yeah. if she can get the fire going. And then know? hide it from her when you're done teaching it. To <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. She <laughs> That's what we told her. We're yeah, like, come, Whoa. come on to a smoldering foundation. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> she would be the one to do it out of all of them. Uh, she she's a. She's a crazy one. She's a, <laughs> she's the wild card for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, what else we we? Well, I guess we want to know about the tattoo. You know, we oh. were we were watching you, um, and curious if it's still there. Did it oh stay? yeah, it's still there, and, and uh, I've added <laughs> I've added around it. I actually had to scrub a couple days off of it. Did you? Uh, oh yeah. And that that took a minute. <laughs> <laughs> But luckily, you know, the berry juice and the charcoal, it didn't take too much. And, you know, everybody was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that. I was like, I was doing that, like, the minute they said I was on the show. Yeah, that no was, kid. I, <laughs> like, I didn't know how it was going to happen exactly, but that was going to happen. And, and usually, uh, I have my, like, primitive tattoo kit, not not a piece of bone, but I've got a, yeah. a, a little kit I bring around with me to a lot of shows. And uh, last year, I tattooed a couple of not this past year, year before last, uh, tattooed a couple of guys at the class, you know, buddies of mine that hang around. It, it drew quite the crowd. You're down there with the deer bone. Of course, it's got a real needle in it and everything, the actual tattoo needle. But yeah. It, it looks pretty rowdy from afar when all people see this deer camera going up and down this guy's back. We're like, holy cow. <laughs> I know, but, man. Yeah. I, that, was, that, that was the... To me, that would have been the first thing I would have done. There was no, like, I'm thinking, like, I've never seen anybody do it. And then you did it. And I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, if I could do it, I would do it. I would put all that on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's ready to get out I mean, how, how can you commemorate the the opportunity any other way, I think, right? Oh, exactly. Especially, you know, in, in primitive form and then taking, you know, just uh, part of that place will always be in me. Like, literally. Right. You know? <laughs> Uh, the, the organic matter there and i think primitive man you know we know we know the tattoo goes back i mean absolutely to five thousand years mm -hmm. so and, you know who, who knows how much further so it was a thing that happened man 
I've caught so much hell over that guys. Like people were like, Oh my God, you'll get infected. You know, that you so, that was so dumb. It's probably what made you sick. And I was like, if you only knew, <laughs> you know, yeah, if you only knew half the stuff I did, you'd be like, eh, I'm surprised. <laughs> that was, that was I mean, I ate worst. algae off a rock. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, for real. You know, that, that was at that, at that point, that was the least of my worst. Right. 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 So, um, just curious, like, I know you've got your YouTube channel, um, you know, and you've got a website where you, I guess you're selling your um, your your knives and things like that. But what all what all do you and Jen do on like the homestead? What all y'all got um, going on? I know I've seen little clips of like some goats and, and her chickens, and I've seen her little cute little chicken roof that she built with the cans. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about her actually. I, I think she may have a problem. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're a chicken lady, like there's no going back. It's like oh, the chicken God. math comes into play. And the chicken a, math. Yeah, it's a thing. What's a chick- thing. What's chicken math? It just you if you got a chicken, you would know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they dude, I've still seen. It, you she she like sense. needs to shirt. It go. It goes basically. Uh, if I get two chickens, two chickens isn't bad. Five, and then uh, you know if you have like six chickens and six chicks, I mean a dozen. Then uh, you know, thirty two is not that bad at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's two more, or what's six more, or what's twelve more? I mean, it really just keep on adding. What's it gonna hurt? Yeah, Melinda has become the chicken lady. One of her chickens is very squawky. My dad, (laughs) my dad calls him the nosy one. (laughs) The nosy one. I mean, I don't care as long as I can eat them. But um, do y'all have like certain kinds of goats? Like, do y'all have keep certain things, or you know? We did. uh, Are they just your pet? Well, wait, Keith, we're, Amanda and I are um, a bit of homesteaders, too. Why? We, we actually, we actually raised five, Why? five pigs. Five pigs. Five pigs. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if, what my kids would say about that. Well, <laughs> the, the boys might not think too much of it, but the girls, the girls really probably would not appreciate it. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. I couldn't help myself. Uh, we, uh, we got now probably... I would say 70 chickens. I have no damn Holy idea. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. A couple wow. ducks. Um, I think we have half a dozen goats. And we went to a, I went to Alaska and worked. Uh, last year, I left like, right after, like, I think the Monday. No, it wasn't the Monday. It was next Monday after the Classic. I, I flew to Alaska, and I was up there until the 1st of October. So uh, we had a pretty good-sized goat herd, and we sold them off before I left, all except uh, – we actually have two weathers that are pack goats, and they're uh, alpine and uh, border crosses. So oh. uh, I've used them like the WMA I work on is seven thousand acres, and it's mostly foot access. Mm-hmm. So you can quarter deer up and pack them out with a couple goats. Uh, and really, they're all the goats are just pets. The chickens <laughs> are egg layers, yeah. and Jennifer's pets are. Uh, buddies or whatever they are i'm not sure it's i love it it. i keep telling alan when we have ours like i've our i've like there's like miniature cows he's like well what is a miniature cow i was like it's a pet he's like yeah you want a pet cow i'm like yeah yes (laughs) a pet cow (laughs) in a strawberry milk bath (laughs) we we have actually talked about getting a couple of scotch highland calves uh we we kind of like them and we had horses before I went to Canada, and then we sold horses because I didn't want her to be possibly stuck all winter having to break ice. Because we are far enough north that it gets cold. doesn't get yeah, it gets colder definitely than it does down where you guys are. We're the we're the furthest north of the south. I'm looking at Illinois right now. Oh, the yeah, right. So Kentucky we stretches little, out there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like from I would say. If, one side the other you're probably looking at 10 or 11 hour drive time uh, I, I would guarantee it mm-hmm. or just that's how long you sit in traffic in cincinnati but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my dad he lives down there in tuscaloosa and oh yeah, really I, yeah that's where I, alan's parents I, live oh yeah. i'll be dang small world yeah right. <laughs> i try to get down there and pig hunt about every march but uh, i didn't make it down there this year so are you from alabama no, ma'am. No, I'm from right here. From right here. Got it. Yeah, Jennifer gives me uh, a hard time. Like, my people never made it very far. They got here, and they were like, yeah, let's just stay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Uh, mine stay too. Oh, right, yeah. Same, same for me. Like, my grandparents grew up on the coal mines, like, here. That's... <laughs> 
We didn't make it very yeah. far. Mine migrated about uh, <laughs> 46 minutes from where they started. <laughs> yeah. Both sides of my family grew up on the same coal mine. Like, nobody ever leaves, apparently. <laughs> Just you're here. Yeah, that's actually what took my dad to Alabama was the coal mines. Uh, they kind of started going downhill up here, so they migrated down there. Mm-hmm. It's work. That's what? Well, um, the work. Well, I, go ahead. What? I was just going to make him tell us about his sheep. All right. Well, make him yeah, t- I want to hear <laughs> right. well, How can you make him. the man do anything? You should well, ask kindly. Well, Keith, would you allow me to make you tell us about the sheep <laughs> <laughs> that you want to start or have started? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, See, just like that. <laughs> I tried to do it year before last, and we had a, a couple of uh, decent shoots. Like, you know, you guys have met Derek. Uh-huh. He just lives uh, a few miles down the road from me. And uh, I, I took him to the Tennessee Classic a uh, year before last. And that little shit from uh, Ryan Rose. So instantly he was hooked. It was all great after that. He bought like a couple of bowls off eBay and we were shooting a little bit. I was trying to help him get it tuned up and definitely not teaching him how to shoot for him or anything like that. <laughs> but we got to talking like uh, uh, where Jennifer and I live, we own about 40 acres. And uh, we got one little piece. I was like, man, we can make a nice little loop through there, you know, and throw some 3D targets up. So yeah. We bought a few 3D targets and kind of cleared some trails off my tractor and uh, started shooting a little bit. And then we we're like, well, we got to have some shoots, you know. Just, uh, and it never really took off because there just wasn't a whole lot of trad guys in this area. I mean, mm-hmm. there's some older guys that had kind of, you know, gone past the point of being able to shoot. And they were like super excited that we were into it, but still wouldn't come out and walk these hills for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then. Fast forward, I go to Alaska up there all year, kind of didn't mess with it much. So we get back last fall and it was getting towards the end of season and I bought some more targets. And a uh, young man that's the uh, same age as my daughter, him and his buddy, I don't know where they came from. They like, came out of nowhere and <laughs> shot two really nice bucks in a week, one of them with a recurve and one of them with a longbow. Oh, wow. And I asked my daughter, I'm like, who are these kids? I ended up, I mean, because it's small town USA. I went to school with one of them's parents and knew the other ones. So, you know, I kind of reached out to them online. I was like, dude, that's awesome. Congratulations. So cool to see some younger dudes into it. Right. Well, then, you know, they were jacked that I'd reached out to them. So they came down one day and we got to talk. And they're like, man, we'd love to have like a track club. So I was like, hell, let's do it. And, uh, you know, like you say, as much as I really get social media, I kind of put it out there. Yeah. And uh, two Sundays later, there was like 20 people in my house with recurves and longbows. All right. That's how That's it awesome. starts. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we kind of sat down, ironed out some rules. I guess I'm whatever I am. I'm, I'm, I'm head of the operation. Well, and, uh, what's the name of the club? Uh, trade water trade gang, and the only place we are is on Facebook. I probably need to start this. Can you move Hang back on. three feet? Yeah, and say <laughs> say it one more time. You cut out a little bit on us. One more time. Trade water trad gang. Trade water uh, okay. trad gang. Gotcha. Sweet. And you guys are on Facebook. Oh yeah. Yep. What's uh? Is it, I guess trade water trad gang on Facebook dot com. Yeah, that that'd be us. Okay, just making sure. I wanted to make sure there wasn't like like we're breaking trad. A L, so I didn't, you know, I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Apparently, no. it's too close to another name. They wouldn't let us have just breaking trad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely, definitely a witty name. So, um, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got y'all's t-shirt on and everything. So I thought this was gonna be a video. Oh, yes. oh, oh man. man, you you can I'll try to represent. Send us a picture, and I mean, when this show airs, we'll be that's like, "That's the shirt. That's yeah. the picture we'll use." Yeah, right. We'll say, "Keep uh, coming." Yeah, sound, sounds good. <laughs> So we've got some we've we've seen pictures of you sh- uh, wearing it at I think at in Kentucky, mm-hmm. but it, oh, yeah. it don't have your face on there. It's just got the back. You got to get, get our new. You got to get our new logo the next time we see you. All right, that, we can do that. I need it's, to get you. Uh, need to get you guys ooh. a couple of shirts with or without what it says on the back of ours. You know, <laughs> no, I want I no. want that one we, specifically. I was supposed we, to get one from you, and I, we ended up going or something. But uh, I definitely want one of those. Yeah, we got to sure. get some of those from you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I believe we can make that and a fire kit happen. I, I have to talk to my uh, 
uh, I guess finance, I guess Derek's the finance secretary. I guess that's what he would be. He handles all that stuff. Yeah, I gotcha. Well, I'll reach out to you. I tell you what, I, I'll, I'll cover your shirt and we'll just swap out. All right, mm-hmm. dude. That, that sounds awesome. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, um, we hopefully will make it out there and come uh, come to one of the shoots. Yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are welcome up there. Done. We we have a very small, uh, fairly primitive guest cabin. It's got an outhouse and uh, it does have electricity and bunk beds and all that. So yeah, anytime you guys would come up and Derek and I do a ton of bow fishing. If you're into that. Oh yes, uh, we've that never would be awesome. done it, no, but we really want what? to. No, I've never done what? it. Never. <laughs> yeah, we I know, keep looking at the rigs, but oh, I've never got. I mean, one. all right. You guys have got to come up and bow fish. Uh, we've got a little boat set up. We're right here. It's kind of the whole uh, premise behind the trade water trad gang. Uh, we're right here where the Ohio River and the trade water river meet. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, uh, yeah, we, we definitely have unlimited. We are in a target rich environment uh, most of the year as far <laughs> as fish shooting goes. Awesome. I'm in. I'm <laughs> down. Let's do it. Love it. Matt's got one more question. Sure. What's the, let's see. He, he thought he did. <laughs> no, I'm, Alan told me I had one more question. Oh. <laughs> you always have the last question. I do. What's one thing that, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think if this applies to him because he said that he doesn't really push, you know, that kind of thing, but he would be the last person to tell. But what would be the one thing you would tell somebody getting into archery? Oh, me. The one thing telling somebody you get into archery, oh, uh, like a beginner, like if a yeah, beginner like somebody's starting out, yeah, yeah, uh, I would say patience. <laughs> you know, be, be be patient with yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, be patient and be consistent. That, that that would be, you know, if I if I had any advice to throw out there, that would be it. Uh, and I, I mean that in all things. Be patient with yourself, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, from a, a trad bow hunting. Uh, standpoint uh, more of like what I'm looking at it through uh, be patient with the animal you know and, and be respectful uh, I, I don't kill I've probably taken I don't know maybe a dozen deer with trad bulls mm-hmm. and, and you know definitely don't kill one every year because I'm just really patient and picky about my shot Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, gotcha. you know I want the deer to be relaxed I want it to be close and I want it to be clean and humane and want it done you know right. i don't, I don't right. want a train wreck I and mean, train wrecks happen don't get me wrong they still happen to me yeah but, well yeah, i think I, I think that's great advice yeah, I mean, that's, yeah that's terrific advice. um but i think we're running at time keith so uh we're gonna we're gonna shut her down but i appreciate you coming on man it, it means hey, a lot thanks for having me guys me, it means a lot uh, to us um yeah. yeah like thanks i mean it was cool like befriended in within one sh- one uh one shoot met you and then here you are and now we're looking at trying to make a trip to kentucky to spend a weekend and your guest <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna learn how to yeah, I, I, you got to get you guys on some big head carp you, you haven't lived till you shot a 50 or 60 pound carp for the recurve all right then i tried really hard to like get get them like to fish some carp <laughs> but they <laughs> they would never eat. What did I do? I was like, peanut Kool-Aid butter balls and Kool Aid and, and oatmeal. I was making all these little balls and trying to stick them on my hook, trying to get them to never. You got to force. Got you got to force feed them. Never got it. <laughs> That's it. Force feed them with that arrow. <laughs> yeah, force feed them with an arrow. Yeah, they'll fair. bite every time. It's yeah, just about every time worse. they'll bite. Then. <laughs> yeah, Matt got a carp one time at my aunt's pond, and it got it all the way up to the mud bank, and it. <laughs> like it's spit it out. <laughs> well, um, uh, again, man, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah. All right, you. man. Well, we'll see you at the next one. When's that? When's the next one? Uh, I might I, I might make it down there for Howard Hill. Oh, oh, that would be awesome. You should. Might. Come well, on. Well, come on. All right. Well, oh. hopefully we'll see you there, man. Yeah. All right. Bye now. Yep. Take care. So before we get into the shoots, I want to uh, just drop some info for you guys. Um, if you would like to go follow Keith, um, 
They have a YouTube channel. It's Ramshackle Homestead and Survival with Keith and Jen. Make sure you go subscribe and um, follow all that. They've got some really cool stuff. Like, they're covering all kinds of things, like foraging, knife building. I mean, mm -hmm. the black powder gun thing, like, all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, you can also uh, go to their website and uh, check it out. It's RamshackleHomesteadSurvival.com. And also look them up on Facebook, uh, Ramshackle Homestead and Survival with Keith and Jen as well. And while you're doing that, go ahead and subscribe to Breaking Trad yeah. YouTube. If you haven't done that already, <laughs> then I don't even know what we're doing. Right. That's like, <laughs> Get on there. <laughs> I know you can hear us in your ear, but you got to see us. Right. Also with better. your eyes. We're cute. <laughs> we make funny faces, and sometimes you're looking at my head because I doodle so that I can focus. Yep, it does happen. Um, all right, so the first shoot on our list is going to be June 11th and 12th, uh, the 31st annual Rapids Archer Traditional Coon. <laughs> Dang it. Yes. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, okay. 31st annual Rapids Archers traditional shoot in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. <laughs> it's every time. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> and then that same weekend, we've got um, the fun shoot competition in Harrisburg, Kentucky with our friends at Kentucky Traditional Archery Association. And June 11th through the 12th will be the IBO Southern Trial Championship hosted by the Panhandle Bowhunters at the Klondike Archery Park in Pensacola, Florida. That's going to be a good shoot. Um, make sure y'all get down there. It's, it's, a, it's a really pretty, pretty place to go. And everybody needs reason to go to the beach. Agreed. Let's see how we can get down there. Yeah, I don't know how. I'm not. <laughs> All right. Um, Southern Traditional Archery Association, Saturday and Sunday, June 25th and 26th at Enid Lake, Mississippi. Um, believe that is the Catch a Dream shoot. Yeah, because this past one was the memorial shoot. So yeah. this one should be the Catch a Dream. All right. And then we also have the 35th Traditional Archery Nationals. <clears throat> That's going to be June um, 10th through the 12th in Cloverdale, Indiana at the Cloverdale Conservation Club. And state championship in um, at Hoosier Traditional Archers, July 1st and 3rd. And that's in, where are they at? It's in Indiana. Cloverdale? No. No, mm -mm, just kidding. Yeah, just, sorry. I can't remember the city right now. But you can find all that information. Um, I'm sure John Fort and Mandy Boggs, we had them on our um, Facebook page. You can find it there, or you can go to the Hoosier um traditional archery club facebook page and they'll have that information i think they actually have some event pages that you can go and find all the info straw town indiana straw. that's what's on our calendar yeah i've seen that and i didn't know if that was right so i didn't put it on there didn't sound right but doesn't sound right to me either but <laughs> potentially that's correct all right and then um i had both of these listed on on the calendar, and so I'm not sure which one. I need to go to back and double check, but there's going to be um, a shoot at um, Buck Hollow on July 9th and 10th, and I'm not sure if it's an open shoot or if it is going to be the vintage bow shoot. I had the open shoot on the 9th and then the vintage bow shoot listed for the 10th, so I need to go back and double check, but the, their flyer that has all their shoots listed for the year is going to be on our Facebook page. I, we've shared it multiple times, so we can go back and um, find all that information there. I think it's going to be the open shoot, but double check for sure. <laughs> um, and July 9th, another fun shoot in Harrodsburg, Kentucky with our friends at the um, Kentucky Traditional Archers. Thought I could pull it up faster than I was. Let's see. Um, it is gonna be. So we don't have the. Vent. Actually, it is. That's right. So J July 9th will be on that Saturday. Will be an open shoot, and then Sunday, July 10th, they're gonna have a vintage bow shoot, trad bows only. So bring out your old Ben Pearson, you know, all those vintage bows, and um, it'll that'll be fun. That's cool. I like that. That's a neat idea. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all the shoots we have. So uh, I guess we'll. 
list more next time. Hopefully, we need more <laughs> shoots to list off. <laughs> well, we can throw in the Twin Oaks Critter Shoot for July the 16th, yeah. Saturday. So, okay. weekend after that. So, that'll get us closer to a month. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that, uh, unfortunately, does it for another episode of Breaking Trad. Mm-hmm. I'm a little, I'm a little depressed. Although I'm a little, I'm a little happy. Everybody. <laughs> well, because I hope to get to Kentucky and do some bow fishing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is the opposite of depressed impressed? No, no, I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I don't uh, know. I'm, I, I would totally go hang out. Keith and them seem, seem like a cool bunch. They're pretty, fun, like, they seem like they have fun. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, during the shoots, I guess you guys got his YouTube in there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Speaking of YouTube, it's YouTube Matt? and website. They already did that too. Page. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they did that. Oh, okay. Wait, they plugged the YouTube. They plugged our YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany. You plugged it. it. Okay. Cool. And then Amanda said, "If you're not already doing that, then what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not on YouTube watching Break a Trad, then where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> no. She's unfriending me. Un- yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um. Well, let's see. When is this on? This one's gonna air. We think June ninth. June ninth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's what we we um, collectively, in the middle of listing shoots, came up with. <laughs> yeah. So Sounds good to me. <laughs> that's what it is. Well, you know, we got so much. Well, we got three in log now. Hmm? Sure. Three shows in log, like backlog. I don't know. No. I, don't know. I know we're gonna drop one. We I think we got one in the hole, don't we? Mm-hmm. So yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess that's it. Who's whose turn is it to? I'm gonna say Brittany. It's your turn. Um, Roll it, guys. We're glad you could join us for this week's episode of Breaking Trad. We hope you had as much fun as we did. You can catch the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. You can contact us at breakintradpodcast at gmail.com or on Facebook at breakintradal and on Instagram at breaking underscore trad. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and follow us. That way you'll get notifications every time we drop a new episode. Join us next week. And remember, make make every every shot count. count.